have been living in New Zealand for five years. I cannot believe it. So today I thought I'd take some time to reflect on five things that I have learned since living here in New Zealand. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, guys. If you don't know us, we are a family of six that have been living in New Zealand now for five years. So today let's talk about five things that I've learned. I'm going to talk about things maybe that I haven't mentioned before or go in more depth or just have an actual reflection. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss all five. They're really good. Um, I thought through them and really kind of put some things out there that I don't think I've mentioned before. So stay tuned, subscribe below. Here we go. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare.com is a wonderful online community where creatives can get together and learn from each other. So check it out, Skillshare.com. Okay, number one, the best things in New Zealand you will find at the end of a gravel road. You heard me. The exploration, the untouched beauty of New Zealand is like no other. And when you are on a map and you're like, I want to go check this out or somebody, a local maybe recommend something and you hit a gravel road, that means that you are about to get to the most exciting place. <laughs> I'm telling you all the best stuff in New Zealand comes at the end of a gravel road. And sometimes you're on that gravel road for a really long time. You're like, where are we going? Are we going to be able to get out of here? Because <laughs> sometimes it's a gravel road and it's really windy and it just kind of goes forever. But I'm telling you, stick to that road because at the end of the gravel road, you will not be disappointed. So yes, if you are visiting New Zealand, um, when we start opening up our borders, definitely be excited when you hit the gravel road. Now, the second thing that I've learned and come to appreciate living in New Zealand over the last five years is Kiwi ingenuity. It's like second to none. Now they just figure things out. If they need something, if they have to fix something, they fix it and they deal with it with the materials that they have on hand. They're very um, smart and creative and they, a whole new meaning to DIY. Do you like to do it yourself? <laughs> a whole new meaning. And it's amazing. And it's part of um, how they're educated here. People are, are encouraged to think outside the box, to figure stuff out. It's not like, you know, X, Y, Z, and then that's the answer. They're very much encouraged in the education system to be out of the box thinkers. And you see that in just daily life. So they're DIY. They just, they don't really think about not fixing things themselves. People, they just are doers here and they know how to, they know, they have a lot of skills and it's not limited to gender roles either. If you notice, like all the men cook here, generally, <laughs> and all the women, like I've had landlords that are like in their 70s, climbing up ladders, changing light bulbs and da da da, and you know, the female and like, you just don't, yeah, like, and it's great. You know, I mean, I think in general, the world has broken out of a lot of gender roles, but specifically in New Zealand, you see it quite a bit with so many female leaders, female prime minister, you know, just like just a whole new and just more of an acceptance I've noticed compared to where I'm from in the U.S. and the Midwest. And so, yeah, they put a whole new uh, view of DIY and they're very creative. So like, for example, when I take my kids to like a camp, like they're like homemade water slides and like homemade uh ropes courses and things to do and like that works and it, and it and it works here because we don't have the same level of like liability issues or suing and so you know they don't they value the fun and so they're very creative in what they come up with and what they do and they think oh this would be cool and it's like this just like the way that they think about things you are notice you can tell that they have been trained and um to think that way and to be exploratory and creative. So it's really great. You cannot beat Kiwi ingenuity. Okay, number three, the third thing that I've learned living in New Zealand for five years has been just slowing down and living life and valuing living life over working and accomplishing and accomplishing and working. And I have to say <laughs> that I have recently reflected personally on my life and how um, you know, you, you, you love the idea 
of like work-life balance and slowing down and doing that. But the reality of that, when you coming from a culture that doesn't value that, that it's not easy to just jump into that. Like initially it is, you're like, oh my gosh, finally I can relax and there's no pressure and there's no stress. But then I find myself that I've started to go back into, you know, kind of how you were raised and how you were, you know, like the values that you have. And I find that I'm working really hard and I've started all these businesses and I'm, and I'm doing all of these things. I'm like, why am I doing this? <laughs> you know, because you don't realize how much you value that sort of accomplishment and goals and doing, and there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just, it's good to take a step back and reflect and think, you know, here they just value living life to the fullest, to the best. And you just kind of see that in all of their decisions and what they focus on in life in terms of work, in terms of family time, um, and how much vacation time that they take. And that's just kind of, you know, normal and what they value. And I just really noticed that recently as I've started a couple companies, like, you know, it's very American of me to do this, <laughs> you know, but it's also very easy to start businesses here and small businesses thrive here. And so there's all these other reasons and I enjoy it, but it's so interesting that we've kind of, um, you know, it's kind of ingrained to you, you know, entrepreneurship and accomplish, accomplish, work harder, you know, because I'm not feeling a lot of pressure other places. And so you feel like you have time to do these things. And so it's an interesting reflection. But it's a it's it's taken me time to say, hey, what do I value? What should I be putting my time into? Um, and just noticing that I have had to learn how to value the life, um, family balance and life work balance, uh, and it just doesn't necessarily come natural. And so that's something that you've learned if you've come from a culture that's just you know push 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 push, uh, that it's hard to kind of just in every area just kind of stop pushing. So that's the third thing I've learned. Skillshare is exactly how it sounds. It is a platform where creatives come together and just in community can share skills with each other. I personally love this platform because now I've become a YouTuber over the last year and have a lot of skills to develop. And so there's so many great classes on Skillshare that helps you do that because I think that learning is lifelong and it's so great to do it in a community of creatives. If you check out Skillshare.com, these are some courses that I would recommend. I would recommend YouTube Success, Script, Shoot and Edit by Marquise Brunley. He's like amazing. I was so easy to watch him, so interesting. And he gave me some really good tips on how to shoot some videos better. The second class that I would highly recommend is if you're on Instagram, which we all are, is a video on how to tell your story in like one minute or less on Instagram by Halise Harvez. And it's so good. And she is just so wonderful to listen to and so calm. And I really learned uh, some really good techniques with jump shots. And if you're at all involved in the marketing world like I am, you all know Gary Vanderchuk. He has a great video on here about context is key when talking about social media. I highly recommend watching this. Everything is so good that he always talks about in learning how each social platform has its own context and how you need to present information differently across different contexts. Skillshare is built as an online community for learning. That's all it is. There's no ads on this platform. You just go in and you can just learn and you just learn what is convenient for you, whether you're just, I'm, I do it when I'm waiting for my kids out of sports or if I'm on the bus or if I'm just traveling around or going for a walk, I'll just listen to it in my ear and it's just great. It's a great way to constantly upscaling your skills and your creative and getting motivated to try a new thing. There is no reason to not try Skillshare today. Click on the link below in my description and you're going to get one month of Skillshare for free. Normally you get 14 days. If you click on my link below, you'll get one month for free. So there's no reason to not try it today. So go check out Skillshare.com. And number four, the fourth reflection is let's talk a little bit about education. So as you know, I have four children and it was really different for us here at secondary schools, which would be high school there's a lot of same sex schools. So they wear uniforms and it's just an all girl school or an all boys school. And it's just very common. It's not everything. You can find co-ed schools and you know, they, in every area as well, but it's just surprising how many are same sex schools. And so it's interesting. So initially when I walked into it, I was like, oh, that's nice. Just imagine all the problems you eliminate 
not mixing boys and girls, right? So from the boys' perspective, from the girls' perspective, and just all the dramas that exist, because I kind of feel like, you know, you throw um, the opposite sex, and then that's what creates the drama <laughs> for girls anyway. And so I was kind of excited about my kids doing that. So my kids go to same-sex schools, and now that I've lived here for five years, and a little bit of reflection on this, I think obviously with girls you have that tendency, um, you know, like if you're in the groups and they're clicky and girls can be um, pretty mean to each other. And, and I think that that happens whether they're in the same sex or a co-ed school. Uh, but I've also noticed that my girls are very comfortable with themselves and don't having this lot of pressure to look a certain way when they go to school or, you know, they're just very comfortable without makeup or without doing their hair or just, um, just I just noticed with, with working with girls on sports teams that they're just very comfortable with themselves. and. Um, and I think that works and that's one of the positives. And there isn't, you know, there's always gonna be pros and cons to everything. And boys too, like, you know, the boys have like this brotherhood and like this bonding that they have and they all get along much easier and don't have, you know, different expectations of each other. But uh, I did notice that when you go to like an all boys school, man, boys definitely benefit being around girls <laughs> in terms of hygiene. <laughs> in terms of like it's like you go to the school and you like I can't believe the smells and you know they just they just don't know and even like sometimes the communication skills because they're just not around girls who just like communicate all the time and they just kind of are grunting or you can barely tell what they're saying and and this is just you know things that boys go through so there's pros and cons to both right so you have you know, and girls are not learning a lot. Um, they're getting petty about things, da da da, because they don't have boys there to kind of be like, it's not a big deal, right? <laughs> you know, like just who cares? And 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 some girls, you know, will just um, you know have guys as friends. Just works better for their personality if they're not, you know, whatever emotional levels and that sort of thing and logic. And so it's interesting that it's really cool to do, a, I don't think that there's a disadvantage to do a boys school or a girls school or a co-ed school, but a little bit of reflection on how much it does benefit them <laughs> to have the other in their lives. And they do, but it's when you have them in their in your life, like on a daily basis, I think it helps you kind of grow as a person. And so, so there's pros and cons, you know, with both, but I just thought that was a little reflection on um, same sex schools here in New Zealand that I just don't see as much in the US. And number five, the last reflection I'm going to share with you is uh, something that I've talked a little bit about on my TikTok channel that got a lot of attention, <laughs> is that um, in the US, like safety is always going to trump fun because of suing and liability. And, and I think in New Zealand with the ACC, um, you know, they're just more willing to do things that are just actually fun. And so like what would be considered dangerous in the US is is okay and fun here. Like for example, like if you go to like the park system here in New Zealand, there are things to do for all ages, even adults that is super fun, like zip lines, you just kind of go flying as fast as you can. Um, and just some crazy really um, kind of creative Kiwi ingenuity, again, um, really fun things at parks. The parks here are really fun. And it's just, I'm just seeing things like, cause I just noticed with my kids at parks in the US, we're just really, you know, extra safety. They just, as the years have gone down, they've gotten more and more boring. <laughs> and like the ground has to be a certain way and you can't do this and you can't do this, all this stuff that you can't do. Whereas you don't get that here. You, there is, a lot of fun to be had for kids here. Now, of course, they can get injured, um, but it's just a part. It's just a part of learning about yourself, pushing your limits, and I think overall is beneficial for children. So, also another example is like jumping off wharfs, jumping off bridges, just jumping off a lot of things <laughs> that they don't even hesitate here, and they do it, and they just go sliding down things, natural waterfalls, and. I mean, it's okay. And we're just going to take the risk. And obviously you have to use your judgment and be safe, but it's just very, very different on the level of things that you would be allowed to do <laughs> in New Zealand compared to the US. It's quite different. Even like, you know, I recently went on that jet boating tour in um, Queenstown. I'm like, I just don't know that, you know, in the US, you even consider the idea of going super fast through a canyon on a boat and like you're just, you're not really strapped in. You just have like this little thing around you. 
and I just don't think that mm, you even think about that. <laughs> but here it's like, oh yeah, I bet you we could take a boat through, you know, and like talking with people here, they're just always like, oh, I bet you we could do this and this would be fun and this would be an adventuresome. And there's just no hesitation. So it's really fun for kids and really adults um, being in New Zealand because you can really do a lot of things that you're not allowed to do because of safety and liability concerns. Like you'll see kids climbing I'll be at a restaurant. Kids are climbing things and climbing trees and going super fast on their scooters down things. And, you know, of course, there's going to be disadvantages. And it's not that New Zealand doesn't encourage safety, of course, but they're just not over the top about it. And, you know, if they if they think something is actually dangerous, they'll tell you, like, when you're trying to climb the volcano, this may not be a good day because of the weather and da 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 da. And they'll tell you, but they'll still give you you know, you have to make the decision. So um, they'll still give it up to you. So they're not like real controlling about it, but they'll just be really honest about the risks for you and then it'll be updated daily. So so that's really cool. And just very different as an American being in New Zealand. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video this week, guys. Please share your experiences and your stories about what you've learned when you've moved overseas anywhere in the world. I would love to hear your story. And thank you again for Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And just remember the first thousand people that click my link below get a full free month of Skillshare. So check that out. And yeah, just share your comments. Make sure you subscribe below if you like this content. There's obviously a lot more that I could have said, but you know, I don't like to make these too long for you. So definitely leave your comments, leave your stories, and definitely check out my new American recipe book with all the American recipes adapted to New Zealand uh, and Australia ingredients and temperatures. So if you like what you see, subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next week. Thanks.